Hey everyone, I'm Sean Morley. You can see here, I'm sitting at my IS408 desk. We're gonna solve that problem today. All right, here at ShopSaver, we've got this beautiful showroom here, a few machines in it, but you know what? It gets to be a little cluttery mess with samples and stuff we've got laying around. Brandon and I have been talking, we need to fix that. So today we're gonna to get started with some frameless cabinets, kind of a garage design, maybe a small kitchen design. We're gonna show you how we do that. We're gonna do some edge banding. This will be part one of the video. You're gonna see how it's all made. I just talked to Sean and we're ready to get into the nitty gritty. All right, we're gonna be using the Mosaic software to design everything and let me show you how we're gonna do that. All right, here's where we're gonna start. What we wanted to do in our showroom was to have a nice corner cabinet display to store stuff and also just to show people as they come in. So this is where we started. Sean designed this and he went ahead and used some of the construction methods that he uses in his company and some of the materials. So it, it came out really, really nice. One of the first things you do when you start Mosaic is you go to the libraries and you go to one called materials. And this is where you want to put the materials that you intend to use. Now, keep in mind that uh, the material catalog comes with a whole lot of different things and then you can actually add what you want to in there. But this is where it gets the information. So when you say, I'm making a bottom out of a certain material, that's where it gets the information for that. Now you notice also there's a textures here and, and this is where you can actually put your custom textures in there. And Sean did that. This is the material he's actually using and that makes the job just look more authentic. Okay, the next concept let's talk about is material templates. And, and so we started with material catalog, and that tells us what we have to select from. And then this is where we actually select the material. And so then it reads the information from the material catalog. So that's how Mosaic actually manages all that. Let's take a look at one more of these libraries. There's products. So all the products are in there. So let's select, for instance, uh, Frameless version 12. That's fine. And this is a list of the cabinets. And once again, this is outside of the job. So the parameters you set here then become global. It's real important. Let's take a single uh, a door cabinet here, all right? All right, so if we look at that, there's basically our cabinet. Uh, let's actually look at it in 3D here. And we'll bring that up. And we'll look at it from a perspective view. So basically, this is our construction method of how we do a cabinet. So, and it's, it's actually determined by parameters. So when you first set your software up, you set the parameters to produce the construction method that you want. Now let's go to our room view and let's actually look at one of these cabinets. So uh, let's say, let's pick this base cabinet right here. So we'll double click that. That gets us to the cabinet view and this is what it looks like. And let's take a look at the construction methods. Let's look at it in 3D here. There's how it's built. So you, you can tell, let's put some color to it. That's what the base cabinet looks like. So you can tell the construction method that Sean selected. You notice how he's used the actual uh, texture from uh, the material itself. So it looks really, really good. So basically this represents how Sean decided he wanted this cabinet built. So remember that's your construction method. Outside in the libraries, that's those are global parameters. When you get into here, then they're applied. So that's how he basically set all this up. Now we go back to the room level. We look at it in 3D, and this is what the job looks like. All right, so once we've got it designed like that, then the next operation is to go to optimization, and we'll take a look at that right now. Okay, we get to optimization through cut list. So we click on cut list, and we're just going to have everything optimized. And then it's just a matter of optimize. Now this turns the optimizer on. And on this particular setup, we'll just do the three quarter inch melamine. Okay, we'll overwrite. And here's the optimizer. Before we get into optimization, let's look at some libraries. So uh, up here, the materials library is what you used before. So that's nothing special, okay. Then we get into a machine library, and this is where we define our machine. So we basically set all the information, and this is where you set your post processor, all right? Then the next library is actually going to be 
the uh, Thule. So this is, these are your router bits, and, and most of these are coming by default, and you add custom stuff in. And this is where you have all the machine, how fast you're spinning, how fast you're going to feed it. That's where that all comes from, what it can be used for, okay? And then those are grouped together, and then this, this is basically how your machine's set up. So in this particular setup, the first bit I have is a 3 8 compression. Once again, it gets its feeds and speeds off the library itself. And then you have panel groups. So a panel group could be like MDF doors, dovetail doors, that kind of stuff, and, and edge groups. Okay, let's come back out here to the optimizer. The first thing we have is a material tab, and that's basically where it puts materials. Now, it's getting this information off of the material catalog. All right, and uh, for instance, this has grain. This material has grain. And the width, trim, and inter that's how much we're going to leave around the edge. Let's look at the next tab. So the next tab is parts. So this is actually a list of all your parts. I can select one of them, and I can say, okay, I want to edit the shape, for instance. And it lets me get in here where I can actually uh, change the shape of a part. So when you hear people say, well, you can, you can edit at the part level, that's what this means. And this is getting carried over from the, the main layout setup. Okay, but there you see the holes, all right? So the holes are operations. So if we tick, click that tab, then you can see, okay, that line created those holes. So that's how this all works. So it's pretty neat, actually. Now let's get back here to the optimize tab because this is where things happen, okay? So our machine selected, our tool set selected. Uh, basically now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually optimize. So let's click on optimize, and this is nesting. Think about this as nesting. Now, this is what all the nests look like. And what you can see here, you know, some of these have uh, a, a green, green means there's backside machining, so on. In this case, uh, there's machining on both sides of the panel if you see the green. And here's what all the nests look like. Okay, now if I want to look at an individual sheet, I just simply click on it, and there it is. Now, once we get this done, we'll click back on View All Patterns, and we'll generate G-code. And there's our programs. All right, the design work's done. Everything looks great. The next step is to send Sean the files out in the shop. All right, Bob just got done reviewing the files with you. I've got roughly 20 sheets of material over here. We're gonna use TFL today. We're gonna be using the IS-408 and an edge bander over here. I tell you what, this is gonna really cut down the time that I used to have to spend doing a project like this. It would take at least a week just to do the edge banding by hand. Now we can do this entire project from cut, edge band, and start assembling today. It's gonna make the work so much easier. That being said, I do have got a lot of work to do, so let's get started.
just finished cutting all the parts for this job. I've got everything edge banded, ready to go. You're gonna wanna check out part two of this video, so subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want more information, visit us at shopsaber.com and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching.